Hey everybody, how's it going, man? I hope everybody had an amazing holiday. I know that me and Jackson Zero did. We missed you guys though, I love you. I'm glad you guys are hanging out with me, man. We had a really good time. It was my first time getting to have a holiday with my family, with my parents, with my sister. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole fam since uh, before I had to go on the run and move to Florida. So I'm really excited to be able to sit down and talk with you guys tonight, man. Uh, I hope everybody had a good time with their family. I hope everybody had some really good ass food, man. Uh, I just want you to know, man, I really love you guys. I see that we got Trev and JB here, man. Trev, I wanted to thank you, man. We just got our pie cake in from you and cast today me and jack send big love unfortunately uh the pumpkin pie uh didn't make it through the shipping but yo uh the the pie cake is there and it's still in the thing i don't know if it's still good it's been a few days i'm gonna try to eat it because i think it's worth getting food poisoning if i'm wrong i'm gonna try it i don't care uh and we really love you guys we really appreciate it so um, I see that Abigail is here too. I want to take a second just to acknowledge that we have the coolest mods on YouTube, man. Our mods are so dope, bro. Uh, they're so loving, they're so kind, but they pit bulls. <laughs> they will get you if you spam in the chat, if you say in some uh, disrespectful stuff, if you just annoying the chat and making it not a cool place to be, they gonna get rid of you, bro. They gonna get rid of you. I got the best mods, man, and I love them. And I love all of you guys, man. We have a really good community here. So thank you guys for making it safe. Thank you guys for making everyone in this community for making it such a cool place. Um, so look, I wanted to talk a little bit about getting pulled over because I know that a lot of people don't get pulled over very often. A lot of people might not have a lot of experience with it. I want to preface this by saying I'm not a lawyer. I'm speaking from my experience and from what my lawyers have told me. And that's about it. I'm not actually like, I, I'm like maybe a jailhouse lawyer. You know what I'm saying? I know we a little bit about the law, but I have some real life experience that a lot of uh, lawyers would not have because I've been arrested so many damn times. So I'm going to give you guys just some straight talk. You guys can take what fits. You can try it if you want to do something else, but I'm going to tell you what my personal opinion is and what has worked for me and what I think is the safest route. And I love you guys. Um, so keep in mind also, I haven't broken a real law since 2019. I mean, um, typically uh, statistics show that Americans, whether consciously or unconsciously, break about three laws a day, whether that be misdemeanor or felony. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Yo, Lancer, you did your ancestry and found out you're Irish. What's up, big dog? Hell yeah, man. Happy holidays, my mick. Mm, we family, dog. I told you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I haven't broken a real law since 2019, but I will tell you this. Every time a cop gets behind our car, my butthole puckers, dog. Like, mm, I clench, and I don't have anything on me. I never have anything on me. I've never done anything wrong. It's just instinctual at this point. Smokey Dabs 420, thank you so much. Big love to you, homie. Um, so, yeah, uh, but I know the procedure. Here's the thing. The first thing that you want to do um, is you, you want to be polite, bro. Like you are in a situation where you're on the side of the road with a cop. A cop is a dude who's armed. A cop is a dude who has what's called qualified immunity. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like if you guys know what qualified immunity is, it means that it's really hard for cops to get in trouble. When a cop actually does get in trouble, they really all the way screwed up, man. They have certain protections because their job is hard, it's difficult, and uh, you know they have to do certain things that are, uh, you know, just come with the job. So qualified immunity keeps them safe from prosecution unless they really go way out and screw up. Pip two three two. Hi again, JD. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. This is a great way to start the week. High five. Yo, homie, I love you, dog. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I'm glad you're here, Pip. Um, so look, um, be polite. Be respectful. You know what I'm saying? Being combative to a cop is, is not going to end well. You know what I'm saying? It can take a situation where you're just going to get a warning, you turn it into a ticket, it could take a situation where you're just going to get a ticket. It could turn into you getting pulled out of your car, handcuffed on the side of the road and having to sit there while he digs through your stuff. There's so many ways that cops can legally find a way to screw with you. Now, when I say be respectful, I don't mean allow them to trample over 
your constitutional rights. You have certain rights, man. You have the right to be able to go about your business unmolested unless he suspects you of committing a crime or being currently in the commission of a crime. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, uh, there's, there's definitely probable cause and there's ways that they can pull that. Like, and it's different state to state. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're in the state of Florida and they say, I smell chuckle brush, I smell the giggle twigs, I think you've been Hessian, you know what I'm saying? Then they can hit you with that uh, as probable cause to be able to search you. But the state of California has a whole law where they said they can't use that as probable cause anymore at all whatsoever. So it varies state to state. Rain Kior. Oh, dude, thank you so much, bro. Big love and respect, homie. Thank you so much. Ray Kior said, hey man, I just wanted to stop by and say I appreciate you for what you do, my guy. Keep up the work, my man. Hey, I appreciate you so much. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for being a part of our community, big dog. Big love and respect to you, and I hope you move forward with the happiest of holidays, man. Thank you for being here with us. Um, Captain Howdy says Florida doesn't F around. Captain Howdy is 100% right. You got to know the laws in your state if you're gonna be breaking laws in your state. And if you go to another state and you're gonna be breaking laws there, like I always, as a criminal, I always made sure to inform myself as much as humanly possible about the laws. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew that I was gonna be out there doing the wild. I knew that I was gonna be out there giving myself exposure, giving myself risk, and putting myself in situations where I could get busted. Tamrol the ginger gooch! Oh man, yo, that cracked me up, dog. That cracked, and I can say that because I'm like a half ginger, bro. This this shit is red, dog. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I loved that name, bro. Like I'm 12 years old. I can't help it. There's a uh, there's a, a Supreme Court justice that was appointed, and her name is Ginger Gooch, and I I can't with that, bro. I I started laughing like a 11 year old in sex ed, bro. Lancer said, "What's your opinion on the Michael Jackson Neverland?" He said Netherland, it's Neverland, ranch, little boy thing. Look, man, so look, here's the thing. Uh, I do think that any time that somebody uh, is accused of something and they immediately offer a settlement to keep it quiet, to me that, that just feels like an admission of guilt. But also at the same time, I know that there's a lot of people who, uh, there's a lot of people who know that celebrities are going to want to keep stuff quiet. And false allegations might be a big payday. You know what I'm saying? Um, nothing was ever proven in court against Michael Jackson. He was able to pay his way out of every allegation that was made. Whether they were false or positive, he immediately broke bread like Jesus said, homie. He was immediately like, zip, flop, there's the money, go away. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he just had like a really innocent, childish spirit because he had a hard childhood or if he was creepy Cho, like I, I could give my opinion on that, but like, I don't want to falsely accuse anybody or anything. Like the dude was never convicted and a conviction is what says it to me personally. I love you, dog. Brandon Hinkle. Hey JD, it's been a while since I caught it live. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you here, Brandon. Hell yeah. Big love, homie. What's up? Gertrude. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That day, bro. Gert. Gertrude Bartholomew Quintavius Dinglenut. Props to my teacher, Huge Jess and Ginger Coach. <laughs> yes. Hey, I love you, sis, and your name is Fire. Calamity Bob, what's up? I always figured when you get pulled over, just don't do anything incredibly stupid. Keep it calm. Know your rights. Uh, yes, but don't make things worse. 100%. 100%. Know your rights, but don't make anything worse, bro. Now, here's the thing. Is you can be right with a cop. A cop can be 100% in the wrong, bro. Do you want to deal with the consequences of arguing on the side of the road with a cop? There's a place and a time to do the arguing. I always would assert my rights. If the cop was going to violate my rights, we could handle it in court. Let me give you guys an example. So I was in the parking lot of a hotel. I was just going to re-up. And I only had like a half ounce left, bro. And um, this cop wanted to search my stuff. He pulled up. As he was pulling up, I took my half ounce that I had left and I stuffed it in between the elastic of my shorts and my, my jeans where I had my belt so that I knew it wouldn't fall out. 
And uh, they pulled me out of the car because I knew they would. They always do. Um, and I got out of the car and they had me on the side and they cuffed me up because they always do. Anytime that a cop runs my name, multiple cars show up. I'll never have an interaction with just one cop car. When they get my record and they see who I am, they're always going to call in more officers. They have to have backup. It's just their standard procedure with somebody like me. Um, so... Uh, I'm standing there and this cop's yelling at me and I'm yelling at him and I'm cuffed behind my back. And there's a reason I put that stuff there because I knew what was going to happen. I pulled it out and I, I, I fiddled with the bag till it was open and I started dumping it out and then stepping on the shards on the cement. You know what I'm saying? And I was yelling at him to keep his eye contact with me so that I could get rid of that. Because what that was, was a trafficking charge. Definitely an intent to deliver a trafficking charge. It was all bad. It was like a long sentence in prison. I was able to get rid of that, right? Um, but then he found my safe in the car because they were searching the car. And he told me, I want the combination to your safe. And I told him, absolutely not. I don't give you any consent to search me at all whatsoever. We're not doing that. I'm not giving you consent. And he said, I'm going to break your pretty safe unless you give me consent. And I said, well, you know, it's not going to hold up in court. You know that it won't hold up in court. Anything you find in there is going to be inadmissible because you broke my constitutional rights. He looked at me and he said, I don't care if it holds up in court. I'm going to take your stuff and I'm going to take you to jail tonight. <sighs> Dirty. He knew he was breaking the law. He knew he was violating my rights. And he still, he won. Was I going to headbutt him? No. He was like this far from my face. I wanted to headbutt him. Was I going to headbutt him? No. Because you're literally on the side of the road. The time to argue something like that is in a courtroom. That case didn't even make it to court. The grand jury looked at that and they were like, absolutely not. This is absolutely an infringement. It was illegal what was done. The search was fruit of the poison tree. He didn't have uh, the way to be able to... Uh, legally open that safe so since he couldn't legally open that safe there was no case never even went to court homie there's a time and a place always a time and a place and it's not on the side of the road with the cop who's got a gun and it's your word against his cold cuts what's up homeboy thank you so much hell yeah dog thank you big love and respect i really appreciate you my dude um i am seeing some stuff hey happy holidays colt I'm seeing some stuff um, at Corey Howard needs some help. Corey, JD, I really hope you see this and can talk to me at some point. I don't know what to do anymore. Corey, let's talk about it, bro. What's going on? My life is out of control and I need help. All right, bub. What part of your life is out of control, man? Let's talk about this. You got a whole community of people here that care. You see all these people getting my attention to make sure that we can talk this out, brother? You're one of us, bro. You're family here. We love you. We want to see you doing okay. So let's talk about it. What's going on, Corey? I'm watching for you. Um, so definitely choose your time and place of battle, man. It, it's, it should always be a courtroom, bro. Like the only thing you're ever going to do by assaulting the police is you're going to make your situation worse on yourself. Michael Martin, thank you. Hey, JD. Did you keep going when you were trying to quit and all you wanted to do was go back to your old ways, especially, um, how did you keep going when you were trying to quit and all you wanted to do was go back to your old ways, especially when your support system fails? Hey, look, Michael, this is a really good question, bro. Um, and first off, thank you. I love you. Look, man, like I'm really stubborn, bro. I'm pigheaded. I'm, I'm Irish, bro. I got a thick skull. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so like, look for a while I survived out of spite in recovery. I'm not going to lie. And that's not the best way to do it because you're kind of white knuckling it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like embracing the healing and all of that. Um, you know, but for me, it, it was like, whatever, whatever the job, whatever the gets the job done. And for me for a while, it was just fighting for my life, bro. Because I knew that if I went back out there, I was going to die. I knew that if I went back out there, I was going to end up back in prison. I knew that if I went back out there, I was going to like spend the rest of my parents' life being a piece of crap and them never knowing the man that I could be. I knew that I was going to lose more time with my kids that they deserved having a father who was coherent and cognitive and fully present in their life. So I just bro, I held on, man. I, uh, you know, Pretty much for a long time, it was a minute by minute battle. 
and then it was one hour at a time, then it was one day at a time, and all of a sudden I looked back and I was counting off months, bro. It was just months. But one thing that's always been really helpful to me is being of service to other people, bro. If you could go out there and do something for other people, it takes you out of that selfish headspace, takes you out of that being, um, being bored and restless and irritable and discontent, and it puts you into a place of gratitude. I don't know why it works, bro, but it works. So if you could go out and help other people, I promise you, that was the main thing that helped me. Um, Lancer, what happens if you're sleeping in a bunk and you wake up because you hear hee 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 hee, but nobody's around? Bro, well, personally, I'm gonna assume somebody's trying to, just, I'm gonna assume somebody's trying to top me off, bro, because ain't nobody doing a hee 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 laugh in prison, bro. That is not a good laugh in prison. Ain't nobody should be having that laugh, bro. I assume somebody's trying to give me the old gluck gluck. Uh, real, real talk on that, bro. Um, but I love you, Lancer. <laughs> I know you did that on purpose because you saw that video about that laugh, dog. I, I like it when you troll me, dog. Keep going. Um, so we are still, we are still looking for Corey right here, right now. Intellectual iconoclasm. I see you, bro. I see you, family. Hell yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, and uh, also, homie, I did get Narcan to Trev. So, and if you guys need more Narcan, y'all let me know, bro. I, I'll get it pumping for you. Now that we're settled, I know exactly where my Narcan supplies are. I know exactly where uh, I could get to the post office real quick. Um, and big shout out to the people that I met uh, at, at the UPS store over on West 11th, man. Uh, Josh and I, I believe Christy, y'all were amazing. I love you guys. Um... I'm being extra careful. So look, I want to say something like last, last week, I missed uh, a super chat from Jeff. Jeff, if you're out there, please, uh, please let me know that you're here because I want to make that right with you, Jeff. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I missed a super chat from you. Um, I was told that I did. I, I, I couldn't find it. Um, but if I missed a super chat from you, Jeff, please let me know because I want to make that right. I love you. Um... Yo, homie, Shades IP, uh, WS916. Oh, I already know who, the, I, I don't know exactly who you are, but I know you my family, dog. I know you my family, Ken. What's up, man? Brother, I need you to sign my hat. I want to get it stitched. All the family sends their love, that's for sure. Yo, please send all my love to the family. Please give every single one of those mix my love and respect, homeboy. Hell yeah, dog. And I will sign your hat, bro. I, I mean, bro, I, I, we family, bro. I don't even know why you would want my autograph, bro. You get the hugs. You get the whatever you need, homie. You family, dog. I love you, bro. Good to see you on here, homie. Um, Alex Laser, I absolutely love your content. I'm glad that being on the inside didn't kill your humor. You should make a TV show somehow. I'd binge. Bro, look. That's the thing is I'm really trying to do that. I'm trying to do that upstairs in my studio once I get it built, bro. Get that that jail cell and just make full episodes to just drop on the YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Just dropping them on the YouTube. Half hour episodes, uh, you know, and incorporate new characters besides Honaki and stuff. I want to have, I want to fly out people that are other prison creators. You know what I'm saying? Have Jay Williams on an episode. Get Larry Lawton on an episode. Larry Lawton would do a big, uh, a, a great big country. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Show sure enough. Hey, I love you, Alex. Thank you. Philip, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, JD, you're awesome. I've been watching since TikTok. My girl and I love watching you. Hey, big love and respect to you and your girl, Philip. Thank you for being with me for so long, man. I love you. Your family here. Hell yeah. Okay, I need to check. We were trying to talk to uh, Corey, and I still ain't seen... Whoa, Lancer! Woo! My dog! Thank you, bro! I might laugh a lot, but I respect you a lot. Big love. Uh, IRHS, man. IRHS. Somebody put me up, bro. I'm boomer as hell. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me what uh, IRHS means. Corey Howard. Hey, I love you, Lancer. You know I respect you too, dog. I like the way you troll me, dog. It's respectful. It's good. We, It's banter. It's not even trolling, homie. We straight. Um, Corey Howard. 
I have to be here to take care of her. All I can think about is I don't want to be this character anymore. I feel like I missed one. These things move so quickly. Uh, my life is controlled in every way by droogs. Sorry, I have to say it like that. I know that we're talking about something serious, but like, I don't want YouTube to ding me for saying it uh, the right way. Uh, by droogs, I have open warrants due to no appearance for court. I just can't stop this. I'm terrified. Plus, my fiance is a double amputation. I'm going nuts. Look, man, it looks like you got several different lines of things going on. And I promise you, each and every one of those lines is made worse by the substances. Like, the substances help at first, Corey. They really do. Like, honestly, bro, I don't think I'd have survived myself as long as I did without the substances. The substances kept me numb enough to not check out. You know what I'm saying? They prop me up. They were like crutches, bro. But after a while, those crutches break down and they break down more and they start to splinter and break off inside your legs and fester. And it just causes so much more problems, bro. What you need to get right with is the reason that you started needing those in the first place. Whatever your root trauma is, bro, whatever it is that hurts you inside, you know what I'm saying? Like for me, I know that it was what some, some dude did to me when I was six years old, dog. And I ran with that for such a long time, bro. And until I healed that, I wasn't ready to be able to let go of my crutches, dog, because I didn't think that I'd make it without it. But I had to let go of the crutches to be able to get past that. I promise you, it's a scary leap, bro, to go from using to, to not using but I promise you, bro, it will bring you clarity that will make all of these other situations fall into place. I promise you, if you go into court and tell a judge that you're getting help for your issues, they're going to be a lot easier with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Your relationship dynamics with not just your girl, but everybody that's important in your life, once you stop using, those are going to get healthier. Those are going to get better. So, you know, if you need to reach out to be able to, you know... You don't got to pay a bunch of money, bro. You can go to NA. You can go to AA. You could go to uh, smart recovery meetings for free. You could do them online if you can't leave the house where your girl is at. But start getting help, bro. Start getting help and get off the substances. Because each and every time you put one in these days, bro, it's playing Russian roulette with your whole life, dog. Because we never know what's in this stuff off these streets, bro. I love you, bro. My, my main advice to you is to get off the stuff, bro. And it's not going to fix all your problems, but it's going to make the problems that you have easier for you to fix. You're never going to be able to fix your problems when you're still chasing that demon, bro. You know what I'm saying? I believe in you and I love you, bro. Abigail! Abigail! Ah! Abby, I hope you both had a good Thanksgiving. I saw you're now a peace support specialist for zero. That short made me laugh so much. Love to Jax too. Abigail, we had a great Thanksgiving, man. It was so cool. We had such a good time. Uh, Zero. So for anybody who doesn't know, I have a dog. He's a Boston Terrier. His name is Zero. He's obnoxious and I love him with all of my heart and soul. We had to get him neutered because um, he has behavioral issues. And honestly, like to him, he's just playing, but like he's getting aggressive and we have kids. And if he bites one of the kids... Uh, or a neighbor's kid, or a friend of the kids, we're scared that like the courts are going to tell us that we have to do something that we don't want to do, like put him down. Plus, we don't want him biting a kid because we like our kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, the other issue is that we don't have a lot of neighbors out here. But one across the street, which is a very fast-going highway type of street, has two female corgis. So every time he gets the chance to get out, he heads straight for that street and we're terrified that he's going over there to try to, which I don't blame him. How am I going to blame him, bro? He's a, you know what I'm saying? But bro, if, if that urge takes him to the street one day and we can't catch up with him before a car does, bro, it, it's just, there were a lot of reasons we had to get him neutered. Um, but now he's neutered and, uh, he's walking around with a cone around his head and, <laughs> yo, he, he does not like the cone because one of his favorite pastimes is licking his own junk, showing off, doing something I can't do. You know what I'm saying? If I could reach it, I'd never leave the house. I don't know about y'all, 
Like boy or girl, bro. If I could reach it with my mouth, I'd probably never leave the house. And he can. Except now he's got a cone on, and I feel bad for him. I love you, Abigail. You're amazing. Um, yo, P-Tart said, do you miss Florida? Homie, I 100% do miss the weather in Florida. Uh, I also miss some of the craziness in Florida. Like, I don't ever, like, get a ring alert on my phone that an alligator uh, just broke into somebody's front door. And that would happen on a regular basis when I was in Florida. You know, I got, I got ring cameras set up everywhere. I'm an ex-tweaker. You think I don't got video surveillance? Because I do. I do. So I get ring alerts from my neighbors, you know, uh, just found a naked man on my roof. Uh, just had a, just had a, uh, alligator try to break in my front door. You know, crazy stuff happens out there. JB, I see you. Yeah. Alligators, dog. Florida's crazy, dog. And I like the craziness. You, hurricanes are hard to miss, but I do kind of miss them. You know what I'm saying? Cause you never know which one's going to be the big one. But you know it's you know it's gonna be some type of ride, you know what I'm saying? And so sometimes I like to go out in the middle of the street in a hurricane and and you know, we used to party really hard during hurricanes. Now that I'm sober, I just kind of like revel in the whole like amazingness of a natural disaster and progress around me. I'll go out there in the street and just ah, it's it's cool, I like it, you know what I'm saying? But also at the same time, I don't like it when it knocks the power out for three days. I don't like it when I can't get a shower for three days. I don't like it when there's no internet for three days. So it can be a pain in the ass. It's hard to miss that. Um, and Jax is getting her very first winter. She's never had an actual winter. We woke up and there was frost all across the trees and all across the grass. Have you guys ever seen when like your whole yard is just frosted? And we have acres out here. There's like deer and rabbits and cool stuff out here. But she got to see that for the first time and she was like, oh, it's amazing. So... Um, Michael Martin, do you mind if I reach out to you on Insta to talk a little bit more? Uh, your vids and style help me more than anything. What is your name on Insta, Michael Martin? Let me know what your Insta name is. If it's Michael Martin, uh, or whatever it is, hell yeah. Hit, hit it up, bro. Hit me up. Um, Larry's a trip. Captain Howdy, you ain't wrong, bro. That's my dog. Lancer said he typed too fast. I love you, dog. Uh, Trev says Uncle Larry's funny as hell. Bro, I need to fly back out there and go see Uncle Larry, man. I miss me some Uncle Larry. Y'all be talking about Uncle Larry. I just talked to him uh, about a week ago for a while on the phone. Trev, love you, dog. Cass says baked goods, seven days. Take a bite. Yo, I, I would take a bite if it wasn't good, bro. I would take a bite if it was poison. Bro, it got all shook up in there. So this is a pie cake in we're talking about. I've never in my life had a pie cake in, bro. I'm just a convict peasant, bro. I've never had a pie cake in before in my life. But Trev's girl Cass is like a master baker. And like, I cannot wait to try this pie cake in that she sent me and Jax. Please give Cass a big hug on that. That's beautiful, man. Yes, the cone, the cone. Um... Kinemod, this is weird to admit. I like where we're going here. I'm not looking at the rest yet. I just want to talk. If you guys want to tell me weird stuff, I'm 100% here for it. Like, weird is my zone. If we get an awkward in here, I'm with the business, baby. So, weird to admit, I recently had someone important to me hurt me pretty bad. Uh, I'm not doing okay. This is all kind of a new feeling. I thought we were going in a different direction with the weird. And I'm sorry, that was profound and deep. And uh, I misread the beginning of that. I heard weird and I got excited. Look, um, what I 100% understand that. Like, you know, uh, and it, it, I think a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on the broken heart that you get from being cheated on or having a partner, you know, like a romantic partner, like somebody that you are in a relationship with breaking your heart. But like, people don't talk about the best friend broken heart, bro. Like, the best friend broken heart is worse. It's worse. Trust me, I know. I've had best friends uh, do controlled buys on me. I've had best friends change it up on me over some fake stuff, bro. I've had best friends uh, do me out for money, bro. Money. Like, if we was making money, hand over fist making money, sell me out for money. Bro, it sucks. And uh, it's 100% it's to go through those types of feelings. 
100% okay. You are 100% natural and normal and okay for having those types of feelings. Those types of feelings, like they come, they come from a deep place of you having loyalty and caring for that person and you wouldn't have done it to them. And that's, that's where most of those feelings come from is, is when, you know, I never would have done you like that, homie. You know what I'm saying? I never would have sold you out like that. And, and you valued me so little that you sold me out like that. I 100% get it, homie, and I love you. And it's okay to have those feelings. Those feelings mean that you're real. And that person that screwed you over, they're fake as F. Um, so look, I think I saw... Where was that? Did somebody say Jeff is here? Tommy B, what's up? If I snort my beta outline, best pump ever, maybe? Look, Tommy, I, I have four letters for you. One word, boof. Boof it. Boof it. Try it. Don't actually boof it. Don't boof beta alanine. You could probably ba boof beta alanine. You could pretty much boof anything. Love you, big dog. Um, yo, Mark of the Beast, what's up, bro? How you doing? Uh, there's one word that will prevent all drug use. Carfentanil. That stuff makes regular fentanyl look like a sugar pill, and Narcan is way less uh, effective against it. So... Yo, Jeff, I see you. Hold on. Don't go nowhere, Jeff. Um, Mark of the Beast. I had a good-ass friend who uh, was, he, he did a lot. He had a tolerance. And uh, just a tiny bit of car. They found him in a recovery house, bro. He had, he had actually made it six days clean off the streets. And the car took him straight out, bro. And when they tested it, because they found a bag in his pocket, when they tested it, uh, they said it was pure car, and he had no idea, bro. Um, that stuff is a nightmare, dog. And just everybody be aware that you have no idea what's in whatever bag that you could get off the streets. And the only safe way is to not mess with it, dog. Um, Mischief and Mods says JD is the best. I am JD. Thank you. I'm not the best, man. I'm just, I'm just one of you guys, and I just love y'all. Thank you so much for being here, though. Um, let's see. Hit that like button, family. Thank you, Gwen. Hell yeah. Um, Lucas, I see you, Lucas Henry. Hey, I'm glad you made it, dog. Big love. Uh, let's see. Abigail says, they revealed who your real friends are. They weren't your true real friend. Facts on facts. Facts on facts, y'all. Kim and Odd, I appreciate you too. Uh, Alex, is it consensual adult prostitution, a stab, stab, stab charge for someone in, uh, for a person who paid for it. No, no, it's not. It's not. And you'll never see that in prison, bro. That's pandering and it's a misdemeanor. Uh, and like, so like there was this huge, uh, human schmafficking bust. And there was a dude that worked at the Pentagon and he's actually in charge of their division of elementary school. Um, and, and he was caught up in this bust, but it wasn't like he was doing, some wild wild, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he had nothing, his bus had nothing to do with kids. He got hit on a misdemeanor because he was trying to get like a $3 blowy in an alley or something. Now here's where it gets really super creepy. He had a wife and kids at home. I can't, I can't hang with people that out there, uh, you know, trying to get a $15 blowy when they got a wife at home. That's just messed up, bro. I don't like that, but it's not a stab. It's not a stab, bro. If you really lonely, you know what I'm saying? And you like, Looking for love in all the wrong places. Pull out a twin, bro. Give her a $5 tip. Don't be stingy, bro. You know, if she's stretching the neck, give her the $5 tip. Put some respect on that neck. Um, Lancer. Sadly, my best friend's laughs. <laughs> he, he, he. Uh, but he's a way cool dude. Hey, 100%. I get it, bro. Like, I... I shouldn't pick on the hee boys, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes that's just people laugh. And laughing means somebody's having a good time. Laughing means somebody's positive. Laughing is a beautiful thing. But um, when that dude trolled me in that video and uh, he was trying to act tough, but then did the hee, I couldn't, bro. I couldn't. I couldn't, dog. Bro, no, I couldn't. Um, JD, do you believe in God? I do believe in God. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, let's see. I'm still looking, man. I, I know Jeff is here. I've been looking for Jeff. Uh, he, he gave, he, 
He might have jumped in and ducked, bro. I can't find his stuff. Tamriel just said Jeff. Tamriel, I'm saying, I'm looking for Jeff. Where'd Jeff go? Hey, do y'all like my new plugs? I got them, bro. They weigh about like 80 pounds each. They're It's crazy. It's crazy. I actually went to go see one of my old, really super good best friends. He's like brother. He's like family. Uh, he owns a piercing shop here in uh, Eugene, Oregon. He's got one of the most lit piercing shops I've ever seen in my life. And I walked in and he's like, yo, what's up, man? First time I've seen him since I've been back. And uh, he handed me like a pan full of new plugs, bro. I got the, uh, what are these? The Tannerite, the Grapherite, the something right. He gave me some good stuff, bro. I'm feeling it. Uh, still looking for Jeff in all the wrong places. Alex! What happens if a 17-year-old lies about her age, says she's 19, the guy is 25, and the paperwork clearly says that? Well, bro, like, here's the thing, man. Uh, Alex. Like, you have to understand that, like, people, people are gonna, like, take those things into account, but, like... Most crimes, it's not a crime unless you're knowing and willingly participating in it. So I know that like I've seen that exact situation happen to somebody and like the chick lied. The chick had fake ID. The guy got off. The guy 100% got off. Like the, I have a friend who was at a bar, met a girl. They did some stuff. She ended up not being 21, not even being 18. The cops went and looked at when she walked in the club because there was a camera. She showed ID. They couldn't even tell what the ID was. They just said, she's in a club. She's, she's acting like she's over 21. We're not going to pursue this. But some cops will push the issue like a dick, bro. So, I mean, if all of that was in the paperwork, well, a dude accidentally did something, bro. They ain't really going to handle him for that. You know what I'm saying? JD, why rag on the cop? They got stabbed. Sometimes your companion, other times you're savage. Uh, no dial on you. Look, here's the thing, bro. I I have compassion for, for decent cops, bro. I like good cops. I support good cops, bro. I am friends with people that are good cops who care about their community. But here's the thing is cops should be held to a higher standard than average citizens, man. They're, they're paid our tax money to be out there doing Specific things, and they're entrusted with the public trust. They are given uh, qualified immunity to do the job that they do. They are handed a gun, and they have more authority than the rest of us. They're given authority. They're given power over us. When they abuse that power and they break the law, they should be held to a higher standard. And this dude was a POS, dog. He was a POS. So I 100%... This dude killed a dude, bro. And was the dude completely innocent? No. But he just was judge, jury, and executioner that day? Nah, bro, I'm not having it. So when he gets stabbed in prison, I'm telling you, bro, cops get stabbed in prison, dog. That's part of what I be telling y'all. Cops, chomos, hard artists, these people get stabbed in prison. It just is what it is. It was just a few months ago, Larry Nasser got the stabs to stab. Uh, but we don't even hear about this stuff unless it's bad enough that they have to go to the outside hospital. Because it makes the prison look bad when the doo-doo gets stabbed. You know what I'm saying? So all, all sorts of stuff is happening all the time and we don't even hear about it because they keep the shh all up on it. They put some shh on that shh. So, um, bro, I don't, I don't like cops that are out there murdering people. You do? You like cops that are out there murdering people? I don't understand how it's a controversial take. Like, cops have authority over us. They shouldn't be out there shitting across the Constitution that they're sworn to uphold. We have constitutional rights in this country. Are you going to give cops a gun, pay them out of your tax dollars, and say shit on my constitutional rights? It don't make no sense, Holmes. Can you do it? Anyway, love you, dog. <coughs> Let's see. Yo, Shane, what's up, big dog? Hell yeah. Love you, bro, bro. Um, I'm still looking for Jeff. Damn it, Jeff. Where did you go? Alex, believe it or not, there's a drug that's even worse than carfentanil. It's nitazines. I have not heard of nitazines yet. I have not heard of nitazines yet, but 
Uh, you know, a lot of what they're doing, uh, mixing the trank in with the Fent too, is really, really bad, bro. There ain't, ain't nothing good out there on the streets right now. Ain't nothing good out there on the streets. Jeff, there's Jeff. Sorry, I had to take my meds. No, homie, I love you. Look, man, Jeff, somebody told me, and, and I'm not sure, but Jeff, somebody told me that uh, I missed a super chat from you last time. Jeff, is that true? Did I miss a super chat from Jeff? Jeff, I'm watching. I need to see you. The cat. The cat's here. What's up? How you doing? So good to see you. Big love. Um, I'm waiting on Jeff. I really want to know if I missed a super chat from Jeff because I want to make it right, bro. I, I never try to do nobody dirty, bro. You know what I'm saying? So if I do something, if I screw up, bro, it's it's in my heart. I'm, it's going to bother me till I make it right. So, Jeff, I, I'm, I'm here, bro. Hey, Sean Blue is here. Liam McDermott is here. Leland Case, Foxy Gaming, what's up? Bankrupt, doing good. How about you, dog? I watch all your YouTube shorts. D Money Industry, thank you, homie. Big love and respect to you. Who else is here? Tyson, what's up? Mojo88. Um, Josh McLean, wired that said company allows. Weird that said company allows grabbing, not he devices it. I have no idea what you're trying to talk about, bro. Are you okay? Are you, are, are you talk to texting? I don't know. Wired that company allows grabbing, he not devices it. Bro, that don't make a lick of sense, bro. I love you, but no, no, we're not following. Um, Jeff. I think so. Can't remember. Well, I love you, bro. And if I missed a super chat, I'm really sorry. Know that I did that on person on purpose, bro. That was not intentional. If you got a question you want to ask me, bro, I'm right here. I'm watching for you because I'm trying to make that right to you, dog. I love you, bro. I always like to give the utmost respect to anybody who, if you do a super chat, bro, I'm going to prioritize getting you a response and my time and my attention because y'all don't have to do that, bro. And y'all super cool about doing that, man. It means the whole world to me. It helps support what we're doing here. It helps support the things that, uh, as far as like my community outreaches and, you know, me and Jack's being able to do the things that, that, uh, are important to us. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shadow of the witch doctor. Hey, I love you family. Hey, JD, I hope you had a good week. Just curious, if I went to prison and wanted to go to church, would that be okay? I'm good with giving chomos the stabs, the st stab, but I also want to go worship. Much love. Look, so here's the rule, man. Not everybody in church is a chomo, but every chomo goes to church. So just so you know, you're going to be surrounded with an unsavory type of people in there. But there are good dudes that go to church in prison. There are good dudes that are just... You know what I'm saying? They're just with their vibe. They're with their belief system. They just are who they are, and, and they ain't chomos. And so those people are fine. Those people get respected, bro. Some people are just trying to be on, like, a higher level of their own spirituality and not trying to get overwhelmed in the darkness of being in prison, and that's 100%. You'd be straight with that. And thank you so much for the support. Love you, homie. Pip232. Uh, if you weren't a YouTuber, what would you do for a job? So, look, Pip, here's the thing is um, that I really enjoy doing YouTube and uh, it, it's, it's, it's been an absolute blessing. But what I really do is I'm a recovery coach, homie. Um, and if I wasn't YouTubing, um, I would be working recovery uh, pretty much full time and uh, probably having another side job because, you know, recovery doesn't pay that much, homie, but it pays in here. It pays in my heart. It refills my spirit. Um, being able to be of service to other people is really important to me. Um, so, you know, I would probably be doing full time with the recovery coaching, um, and, uh, you know, working a side job to be able to supplement income like I did for years and years and years. Um, and then, uh, you know, doing my, my community service work, my community, not service. Cause that sounds like it's court ordered doing my community outreach, bro. Like I, I pass out Narcan. I distribute Narcan to people. I distribute socks. I distribute, uh, you know, snacks, like all this stuff. We give out backpacks to the homeless, um, and stuff like that. All that stuff means the world to me. Um, and you know, it's just, uh, 
it, it, it's, I really love that I have this YouTube thing and, and that we all have this community because like, bro, like a lot of the times, like if I'm feeling in my feelings, bro, I come and read your guys' comments, bro. And you know, I always try to answer comments as much as I possibly can, but y'all, y'all give me so much love, bro. Y'all give me so much love and strength and, and you all really help me with my own personal recovery. So, uh, I just wanted to, I want to thank you all 100%. Alex, controversial take. If someone wants to use non-instant fatal drugs, the government should provide pure, clean products. Uh, and then it's off to rehab. Non-instant fatal. So you're talking like safe supply. Safe supply is not a new concept, bro. Like, uh, and you know, Canada has different places. A dude just got arrested because he opened a safe supply store. He knew he was going to get arrested. He talked to the, the news and he had all sorts of different substances lined up with prices right on his door. How much it was for a gram of this, a gram of that. He knew, he knew he was going to get arrested. He was trying to do it to open the door to have a conversation about safe supply because all his stuff was tested. All his stuff was safe and he was trying to cut down on the overdoses. So safe supply is not, it's not that controversial of a take. A lot of people will get mad if you talk about it, but really if you're in the business of saving lives, harm reduction, safe supply, safe using sites, those are all things that are proven scientifically to work in other places. Let's see. Sean Blue, there are chomos everywhere, not just church. Facts on facts on facts on facts. Can we see Jax's new hot pink chair, please? <laughs> um, I would have to rearrange some stuff to be able to go get it and bring it here. I will absolutely, Kels, I will show you. Uh, if you really want to see Jax's hot pink chair, I will show you sometime soon. It won't be right now. I'm home alone and I can't have somebody bring it to me. Um, others use church to pass substances to other blocks. Abigail, how do you know? How do you know that, sis? 100% uh, people will use church to be able to pass substances and gangs uh, use church to be able to get with each other and pass wheelas or kites or notes. A lot of the time, it'll be stuff like, you know, hits. They're putting hits out uh, on people. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if I'm in D block and I need somebody over in E block, stay! I go see one of my homies at church. Like, hey, what's up, homie? Slide him a note saying, hey, take off on dude. You know what I'm saying? Put dude in the dirt. Uh, and then, you know, that's how you get that done. And then if he's he needs somebody handled over on D-Block, he comes and slides me the note, and he's like, yo, dude's got to go. Then, you know, we got to handle it. That's how gangs do their business a lot, too, is through religious services because it's an easy way to be able to access your homies that are like on other blocks. They're blocked from you because they're on other blocks. That's how we get it. Uh, Pip, got to duck out. So here's my last question for the night, man. I feel you. I love you. Uh, I know Chad Dorman will get prison, but how long do you think he'll last in there? What state is Chad Dorman in again? Is he in Indiana? Is he in Colorado? Um, look, man, I think that they're going to have to send Chad Dorman to like one of the weakest states and put him in PC. I don't think they can keep him in his own state. I think that he will get absolutely ripped to literal shreds, bro. I think that he would get torn asunder. Uh, Ohio, Ohio, Pip, you are right. Ohio. <laughs> yeah. He's not going to last in the Ohio prison system. Like I don't see that happening. Not at all whatsoever, homie. Uh, I think that I think, and I think they're hip to that. I think that this is going to be one of those situations where, cause there's not anywhere in the Ohio prison system where I think that they could keep them safe. Um, so if they're really intent on keeping them safe, I think they'll send them somewhere milder, like, like Wisconsin. Like they, they like to send people to Wisconsin for safekeeping. It seems like from what I've seen, uh, recently, they be sending dudes out to Wisconsin where it's like just cheese and people are a little more laid back. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, um, bro, I don't think even there that he would, he's going to make it very long. They're going to have to put him somewhere where he's going to be absolutely miserable, bro. He will have to be somewhere where he is completely isolated because everybody knows his face. Everybody knows his case. 
everybody hates what he did to those poor kids. They're, they're going to want to put him in a casket, dog. They're going to want to body that fool. 100%, he don't got nothing coming but misery, dog. And for him to avoid the misery, he's going to have to be in complete and total isolation. And complete and total isolation, I don't know if y'all know how it feels to be in complete and total isolation for long periods of time. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, bro, it ain't good. It ain't good. It's, you start to lose your whole mind in there. Trev, how much time have you done in the hole, bro? I know you've done whole time, bro. What, what was your longest rap in the hole, dog? Um, hey, and Pip, I love you, man. Glad you stopped in, homie. Have a good night. Big bless. Trev did a full year. A full year. That's, that's harsh, dog. That's harsh. Nick Johnson, love your music, JD. Thank you. I appreciate that, homie. Hell yeah. Thank you for listening, dog. Big love and respect. Um, Aaron Crow, changed my life. So thank you and much love and respect going your way. Who did? Who did, Aaron Crow? I love you, bro. I don't know if he was talking to me or if he was having a conversation with somebody else. Uh, but I love you. Um, I feel like we need to look for... Missed my question. That's okay this time. I'm looking for Jeff's question. I'm not getting off here until I find Jeff's question. Jeff, did you ask a question on here? I'm looking. Yes. I'm going to prison. Well, prison ministry. Uh, that is any advice for a fish out of water, so to speak. Uh, I mean, not spiritual uh down to be earth. So you're doing prison ministry and you want advice on going into prison. Like, look, man, for somebody who's never been into prison, I completely understand that going into prison, even to do like ministry work and to be able to help with the best intentions and everything, that probably has to be scary, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jeff, I really appreciate and respect what you're doing to be able to reach out and minister to those other men because they need it, man. There's a lot of hopelessness in there. There's a lot of, you know, suffering in there. There's a lot of people just having a terrible time in there. Um, so, you know, what I, what I wanted to uh, say as far as advice, man, is to just go in with some confidence, Jeff. Like, I know you've got it in you. I, I, I know that you're a beast. You got a beast in there and you got a not, you got a kind heart. You're willing to go into prison to reach out to people who are like in a bad place Bro, reach that inner beast, walk in with some confidence. And, um, you know, as far as as far as far ministering to them, man, just understand they're human beings. You wouldn't be going in there if you didn't have the right heart and attitude for this, dog. I really respect it. I really respect it, man. And just know that, like, there were people that came in to, you know, bring us NA and AA meetings and different religious services. And, like, even if it wasn't my bag necessarily, we always really respected those people. So what you're doing is hella huge for those people, bro. Big respect to you, Jeff. Hell yeah. Um, big love, Sean Blue. What's up? Uh, so, hey, just so everybody knows, Abby just uh, posted a petition. This petition is to be able to help the Alaskan Avenger, Jason Vokovich, the man who used the registry of people who did terrible things to children in Alaska to hunt them down and beat them with a hammer, telling them that he was avenging the avenging angel of those children, and he was here to bring upon them what they had coming to them. Now, he got 19 years. Uh, he's about 10 years in, and he has a chance to get out but we all need to sign this petition. So if you haven't taken the time to sign the petition, please, for me, you can call it my Christmas present uh, or my birthday present. My birthday comes first, December 9th. Uh, I will I will owe you a favor, whatever. We all just need to sign this, bro. Jay's a good dude, man. He's been in there for way too long. He has a beautiful heart. He really wants to help other people. And uh, as soon as he gets out, he's gonna be working for uh, hardcore recovery coaching offering services to people who need help in recovery. So, um, you know, if y'all want to, if y'all want to help a real dude out, it'd be really cool if you sign that petition. Uh, shadow the witch doctor. I just wanted to say, I'm proud of you. You're like Anakin after he redeemed himself and is no longer Darth Vader. I just got a star Wars compliment y'all. I love you, homie. Thank you so much. Bro, oh, Star Wars is so my jam. So my jam. Hell yeah. Love you, bro. Um, be good or be good at it on some merch. Tamara, we're going to be working on some new merch. 
we're going to be working on some new merch really soon. So just so you guys know, like my merch is at convictclothing.net. Um, and we are selling the stuff that we have. And then we're starting over. The stuff that, that's on there right now is going to be limited edition. I told you guys from the beginning it wasn't going to be forever. So if you want the, you know, the, the Tromo Hunter hat to make Tromos afraid again, uh, Tromo Lives Don't Matter, uh, the Quit Snitching Punk, uh, any of that stuff, it's not going to be available anymore because we have a whole new set of stuff that's coming out. And uh, the people who got that stuff, um, the people that got that stuff are going to be the only people that have it on the planet because it's not we're not making any more. Um, I like limited edition stuff. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I just saw it. Bro, no, 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 no. Message redacted. Homie. Okay, so I saw there was a $10 super thanks and I didn't see the message. I just saw it fly by and now it says message redacted. So I just want you to know if you're the one who left that, uh, it says redacted, and I don't know how that happens on a super thanks, but I appreciate you, and I love you, and if there was something that I'm missing, please say it in the comments so that I can get to it, because I, I don't want to be that dude. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, Alex, Alex, what's up, Alex? Is threatening to R someone, but not actually doing it? Uh, stop, 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 stop. Uh, what if the person deserved it? So look... Like, you're not going to end up in prison uh, for threatening to uh, hard R somebody. But if you're in prison and you threaten somebody that you're going to hard R them, uh, it opens all sorts of bad doors, homie. Even if you just kidding, uh, even if you just kidding, bro, uh, they 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 going to be mad, dog. Like, if you tell somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like, the wrong person could take that the wrong way and they could do it to you. You know what I'm saying? And they pretty much be in their zone. He said he was going to do it to me. It was R or be R. You don't, you don't want that. You don't want that. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't joke about rape. It's not a good joke. It's not a good joke. Eric Jenkin, I sent any message, uh, empty message, figuring it out. All right, bro. All right. I just, I didn't know if I'd missed something. Homie, I want to send you big love and respects, man. Uh, I just, you know, I didn't want to miss something and not get to it because I would feel terrible, bro. I would feel terrible. It, all those things really mean a lot to me. Uh, when people do super chats, it really means the world to me. So I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't screwing up because I never want to leave nobody hanging, dog. Uh, but yeah, Alex, uh, you very well could get stabbed pretty easily. Or they could do what you're threatening to do to them, to you, and you don't want that smoke. Um, let's see. I've been trying to ask about Star Wars for a few years now. <laughs> uh, for a few lives now. Um, Eric Jenkins, the way you parlayed the debt you paid for the lifestyle you lived uh, into what is without a doubt a life-saving ministry, as it were, is absolutely inspiring. Uh, is there a regular live sesh each week? Eric, thank you so much, bro. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That means the world to me. Um, yeah, just so you know, we, we do uh, every Sunday night. And I just hadn't, I hadn't been able to get on for a few days to be able to say what's up to y'all. So we're still going to be doing tomorrow night. Uh, at the same time, it's 5 o'clock on the West Coast, 8 o'clock on the East Coast. If you're somewhere in between, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but, you know, 5, five West Coast, 8 East Coast, uh, Sunday Night Live. We're going to be doing that again tomorrow night, too. Um, I just wanted to come spend a little bit of time with y'all. I didn't even mean for it to be this long, but we just got to, to hanging out and kicking it. And uh, I, I'm just having a good time with y'all. So, yeah, every Sunday night. And then I do randoms, homie. I do randoms. And thank you so much for the kind words. I really appreciate you. Uh, Zach and Natasha, one petition son, my good friend. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you both. Hell yeah. Um, how did you learn to manage money when you got out? Uh, so, look, here's the thing is that, like, when, when, I was, when I was out there in the streets where I was trapping out of control and money would be flying in, uh, but I was sending money out. The cat, I see you. I will send Jax your love. 
Um, I was really bad with it, bro, because it was all easy come and it was all easy go. Um, and then I had to live for a long while there where I was living on like 200 bucks a week, bro. It was super humbling, super humbling. You know what I'm saying? Because my, my sober house rent when I was, when I first was there and I was making 200 bucks a week, my sober house rent was 150 a week. So I was having to live off 50 bucks a week. Like, and I really, really had to figure out how to, you know, make it work with my life. Um, and ever since then, I've realized that I never want to be down to the point where I'm like looking at top ramen on the streets again. So I just figured it out, bro. I figured it out and I'm still not super great with it, but I'm a lot better than I was before. Look, I didn't learn all the normal adult stuff that a lot of you guys did. I just didn't bro. Because when, when y'all were figuring out the normal adult stuff, I was out on the streets. You know what I'm saying? I was getting locked up. Uh, I was doing all sorts of bad stuff, man. I didn't get to, I, because of my actions, I didn't mature on the same rate and timeline that you guys did. You know, I did it to myself, but, uh, you know, I, I had to figure a lot of this stuff out after I turned 40, you guys, you know what I'm saying? So, um, Ashley, my clean date is tomorrow. Sober cake pick is the profile pick. Hell yeah. Ashley, we are so proud of you, sis. Hell yeah. Big love and respect to you. Happy birthday. You're sober. Hell yeah, sis. I appreciate you. That's amazing. Uh, Gabriel, Gl Gabriel Ginter. I love you, Jax and Zero, so much. Which of your tattoos hurt the most? Uh, what is your best help for alcohol addiction? Getting over it, please. We love you, too. Uh, we really appreciate you. Um, which tattoo hurt the worst? So look, um, I don't know if it's just because I'm old, but all the tattoos are starting to hurt a little bit more uh, now that I'm in my, my twilight years, you know what I'm saying? But um, like, look, like in the belly button right here, when he was like up in these lines inside the belly button, that was awful. The cat, <laughs> the cat, yo. That, I will get my butthole tattooed. I asked my tattoo artist and he's like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And uh, I won't have nobody else do my tattoos besides him. So like in the, in the, in the belly button hurt, back of the head hurt, throat hurt real bad. Uh, sides hurt too. Like the ribs when they're running over the ribs. Uh, yeah. Head sucks, Trev. You already know. What is your best uh, help for alcohol addiction and getting over it? First off, are you talking about detoxing? Are you talking about uh, you know, staying out once you're already detoxed. Cause if you're detoxing from alcohol and you have any type of health, heavy use over a sustained period of time, you need to seek medical detox because people can actually die from that. It's important. You don't, you don't want to, you don't, I've had multiple friends that have died trying to detox at home from alcohol. Um, secondly, get help because it, it's much easier to do it with people that have already been there and done it themselves that can walk you through it. And, um, you know, also you're going to need human interaction. You're not going to be able to hang out for a while with your friends that you drank with. You're going to have to find new friends that do new things. So you may as well find somebody who's already been there and who found their way out. Aussie prison stories. Hell yeah, homie. That's what's up, dog. Um, let's see. Um, uh, bum, bum, bum. Come to Glasgow, brother, and give talks. We really need your advice and help here. This place is effed up. Respectfully yours, Squire McGuire. Yo, Squire, love you, homie. I would love to. Unfortunately, I can't leave the country until I'm off probation, um, which hopefully should be towards the beginning of next year. Um, like, uh, my my PO told me that he doesn't even want me on his caseload. He said, how, how soon are you eligible to be able to uh, get early termination. And I told him, uh, you know, it should be at the end of January. He said, just remind me, homie, I'm going to put you in. I'm going to recommend you uh, for early termination. He said, this is ridiculous. It's a waste of time. There's no reason that we should all be doing this. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, hopefully I'll be off then. Then I'd be able to get out of this country a little bit here and there. Did you see about Josh Giddy? Pika man, I most certainly did. I, I released a short about it. Um, yeah, um, there's a lot going on there and like, I don't, they're not, I haven't been able to find full case details or any updates about it yet. Um, because there's not really anything that's on the, uh, they don't really have a, uh, they don't have a police report for it yet. Cause he hasn't been charged in like, 
So it's all just going to be kind of conjecture and uh, gossip and hearsay until there's an actual police report to read. Um, but from what I'm seeing so far, it looks all bad in the hood, homie, for, uh, for old Jibby Jibs. Uh, let's see. Lego Man. Hello again, JD Delay. How is Toronto's Joker doing? I want an update if he's still posting on social media mocking police. Also, how was Thanksgiving? I haven't spoken to him in a few days, but he was doing incredibly well the last time that I talked to him. He said that he um, started a kick account, um, and he's still on his Insta. Um, his Insta is, if anybody wants to follow him over on Insta, Toronto's Joker. Um, yeah, in fact, he was the first person that popped up on here. Um, if you guys want to follow him, uh, oh, damn. He made new merch. I didn't even see this. Uh, Toronto's Joker is Max Doe on, uh, on Instagram. And he just made some new merch. Uh, so if y'all want to follow Toronto's Joker, he is Max Doe over on Instagram. I just seen a couple messages. I haven't opened Insta in a minute. Um, so yeah, and I love you, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, Wyatt, thank you for signing the petition. I really appreciate you. Uh, Jay Chase, benzos are the worst. Benzos are one of the absolute worst things to get off of. Full stop. It is terrible. Terrible, man. I've got, uh, you know, a really good friend, somebody that I love with my whole heart, who's going uh, through trying to get off benzos right now. And it is absolutely one of the worst drugs to be able to come off of. Uh, it really gets its hooks into you and, you know, tapers and stuff like that is crazy. Um, Abby, I would love to chat. I would love to chat. You already know that I would love to chat. Um, let's absolutely figure that out, Abs. Do you want to hit me up, Abby? Um, hit me up over on uh, on the Insta. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or actually just, I'm sure you, have, you can get in contact with Trev. Get my number from Trev, Abby. I would love to talk to you, sis. I appreciate you. You guys, uh, I am done for the night, man. I need to get stuff ready before Jax gets home with food for dinner. Um, I love you and I appreciate you and I, I really can't say how much it means to me that y'all spent your evening hanging out with little old me uh, and each other because you guys are all absolutely amazing. Uh, Bill, the petition uh, Abigail has posted in here a couple times, it is for Jason Vokovich, the Alaskan Avenger, to be able to get out of prison. He's already done 10 years. It's time to let him go, man. It's time to bring him back to the streets. He's going to be working for my recovery coaching company. And uh, we want to see him out here doing good, man, helping other people. So I love y'all. Have a great night. If y'all want to come back and hang out tomorrow night, I'm doing Sunday Night Live. We're going to be talking about something completely different. Be good to be good at it. Be good to each other. Be good to yourself. I love you guys, man. I'm out.